All right, Geometry Unit 4, Lesson 7, Objectives here. Uh, as you can see, are followed. Uh, determine side and angle measurements using opposite side and angle along properties. Hmm, this is interesting, weird wording, in parallelograms. Uh, determine angle measurements with consecutive angle properties in a parallelogram and utilizing the parallelogram diagonal conjecture to answer some questions. So let's get into it. Okay, let's read the following uh, properties of parallelograms. Parallelograms are quadrilaterals, just shapes with four sides, whose opposite sides are parallel. Rhombuses, rectangles, and squares are all types of parallelograms. Therefore, any property we discover for a parallelogram also applies to those other shapes. However, to be sure that your conjectures will apply to any par parallelogram, you should investigate parallelograms that don't have any other special properties, such as right angles, all congruent angles, or all congruent sides. So let's look at a few examples here. First is the parallelogram opposite angles conjecture. The opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. I'm a Bears fan, so this green and yellow kind of makes me sick to my stomach. But you'll notice that in a parallelogram, we see we've got opposite sides parallel. As such, the angles across from each other or opposite each other will be equal in measure. That's true for all parallelograms, including rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. Let's look at another conjecture. The parallelogram consecutive angles conjecture. The consecutive angles of a parallelogram are Supplementary. And supplementary means sum to 180 degrees specifically. So that means that uh, A plus B equals 180. B plus C equals 180. C plus D equals 180 and A plus D equals 180. So in the diagram given below, I can use my previous two conjectures. Opposite angle conjecture tells me that B would have to equal 110. Again, I can only use this if I'm dealing with a parallelogram, as I can see I am here. And then the second conjecture, the parallelogram consecutive angles conjecture, tells me that C plus D, excuse me, C plus 110, which would have been D, had it been oriented the same way as the previous problem, equals 180, therefore C would equal 70. Now again, I back myself up to the opposite angles conjecture, which would then tell me that since this is a parallelogram, angle A would also be 70. Our next conjecture is the parallelogram opposite sides conjecture. The opposite sides of a parallelogram are also congruent. As you can see here, AB would be congruent to CD. I can see that based on this marking here and this marking here. Likewise, AC will be congruent in, uh, to BD. So their measures or their lengths would be the same. Let's look at the parallelogram diagonals conjecture. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. I'll use that T. So what that means is that AD bisects BC, cuts BC in half. So then the length from green to blue will be equal to the length from blue to red. Likewise, BC bisects AD, meaning that yellow to blue will be congruent to purple to blue. Very interesting properties that show up in parallelograms. Let's continue. Take a moment, pause the video, and try this one on your own. Okay, I'm given a parallelogram. So all previous conjectures apply to this figure. 
I can say that these sides are parallel as well as these. And this side is congruent to this side as well as these two. Now, since I'm only looking at angle measures, I'm going to use the opposite angles, angles in a parallelogram conjecture, saying that B is 118. And that A and C would have to be the same. Now, I do know that 118 plus A should equal 180. Those are consecutive angles. Therefore, A should equal 62. And by the opposite angles conjecture yet again, C would also be 62 degrees. Once you get the hang of this, you're obviously, when you're working with parallelograms, it's relatively easy to identify visually angles that are congruent. Let's continue with another example. Okay, in this parallelogram, we can see that we've got a couple of diagonals drawn. Those diagonals uh, would be from corner to corner, as you can see here as well as corner to corner here. Now I believe that Y represents this distance. X represents that distance. Okay, nine represents this distance. And eight represents this distance. Now in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. So the blue segment and the red segment will be the same or equal in measure. Therefore, Y would equal 8 inches. Likewise, the purple segment X would be equivalent or equal to 9 inches. Now, when it comes to working with side lengths on a parallelogram, we know that the opposite sides are congruent. Therefore, Z would have to equal 14 inches. And... As well as these opposite sides. Therefore, we know 12 equals 2w plus 2, and therefore 10 equals 2w. Thus, if we divide by 2, we see that w is equal to 5 inches. All right, that's how you use some of those properties in order to solve for sides and diagonal lengths within a parallelogram. Let's continue. I believe uh, we've got one more example here, and then we'll look at a couple of homework problems. But in this parallelogram, I should really label uh, with multiple arrows on this, just to make sure that we know that the opposite sides are parallel here, as well as these opposite sides are parallel here. That tells us we've got a parallelogram. Now what you might notice is if we look at these, these two horizontal parallel lines, then alternate interior angles would tell us that those two angles are congruent. Likewise, if I look at the slanted parallel lines, the alternate interior angles that I would see here would be A and 50. That tells me that A would equal 50. Okay, now as I look at opposite sides, excuse me, opposite angles within parallelogram, I know that those are congruent using the opposite angles parallelogram conjecture. And then to find the value of angle C, I know that within this triangle on the bottom left, 70 plus 50 plus C should equal 180 degrees. Thus, I can go ahead and combine like terms here. This would be 120 plus C equals 180, and therefore C would have to equal 60 degrees. Now another way you could go about this is I know that my consecutive angles, see if I can highlight this, consecutive angles are supplementary in a parallelogram. So I know alternate interior angles, we could call this C. So I could say 70 plus 50 plus C is equal to 180, which gives us exactly what we had before. Okay, now let me reemphasize this. Consecutive angles, this is our first angle right here. And then 50 plus C is our second angle. 
So I've got one angle plus the consecutive angle to it, which is the sum of these two individual angles, should equal 180 since they are supplementary. All right, let's continue with another example. Okay, guys, so this isn't much of an example. It's more of a visual. But you can see the quadrilateral family in this Venn diagram, right? Houses all of these quadrilaterals, a kite, trapezoids, right? You got your general trapezoid and then the isosceles trapezoid within that family. Then you got the family of parallelograms. Inside the family of parallelograms, you've got the rectangle and the rhombus. And their crossover or their intersection is the square. All of these uh, parallelograms, everything within this orange oval here, share the following, right? However, some of them, the further you get into the family, the more specific you get, and most specific, the square, have more properties, but all of them share these four properties. All right, let's do a couple questions from the homework. Alrighty then, here we are. We've got uh, number five from the homework. Uh, in a parallelogram, which I'm told I have here, I know that opposite sides are congruent. So I can confidently say that this side would be x plus 3. Uh, I could say then that x minus 3 should equal 17, which means that x equals 21. It asked me for the perimeter. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to uh, consider that these two sides right here both are equal to 17. I don't know if that's uh, centimeters or feet or whatever, but I don't care. I've got 17 there. Now, if I were to insert a 21 for x, that gives me 24 for each of these sides. So x equals 21, I know that, but that's not a side length. It's just a value that helps me to find the other side lengths. Therefore, the perimeter would equal 2 17s plus 2 24s. Seventeen plus twenty-four is forty-one times two. Perimeter is eighty-two units. Let's go centimeters. All right, let's look at another question. Okay, using our new conjectures, uh, what we can do in the following parallelogram, we can do this relatively quickly. We know the opposite angles are congruent. I could definitely work that. So F is 78, since angles across from each other or opposite each other are equal in measure. And the other thing I can do is if these two lines are parallel, then I know the alternate interior angles are congruent between those parallel lines. Uh, thus, I can say that E is 63. All right, guys, that's lesson seven. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.